no matter the location. From OAKLA to LV, I'm a Raider. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders board. If you haven't already, hit that big red button that says subscribe and turn on those notifications. That way you don't miss an episode. And if you're missing our live Tuesday shows, shame on you. 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. This first question is coming in here from Matt. What do you think about Richard Sherman? I think Richard Sherman is probably the most John Gruden type of move that you could possibly make. We'll see if it ultimately does happen but if you could bring in Sherman two years, $9 million a year, it's probably the route that I would go. He also knows the system. He could be a good player coach. could also teach a guy like Damon Arnett what it takes to be successful and teach a guy like Trayvon Mullen, Isaiah Johnson, what it takes to be successful in the NFL. No question from Modern Abyss, but, hey, appreciate the super chat. Much love to you. We're, we're getting there. Let's go to Raider Nation. This next one's coming in. What's up, Mitch? Got a quick question. Since we got all the defensive line all good, what position should we go after now? Safety, cornerback. Safety and cornerback. I want a top safety still out there, Malik Hooker, and I want a veteran corner or somebody like Brian Poole because then it puts a little bit less stress on the Raiders to go out and fill those positions. Guess what? In the NFL draft. Now, if you guys want your question to be answered, you can also hit me up on Instagram. I know that I can't get to all y'all every single week that we do these live shows, but I do check my DMs if you want to get to know me a little bit more personally. Plus, I'm going to have some off days uh, this week, so I'm going to be doing an IG Live. So make sure you don't miss it. Hit me up on Instagram. It's at MitchellRens365. My YouTube, my takes. All right, thanks for watching. Who was a player you think the Raiders could cut that would shock Raider Nation? So a surprise cut. Okay, I think the most surprising cut probably since I've been covering the Raiders I remember when they cut Brandon Marshall, that threw a lot of people off. Also, last year when they cut Tier Whitehead, that threw some people off, but that was one that I predicted. How about this? I'm going to go with Mo Hurst. I talked about this two weeks ago on the Raiders Report, and I'm going to talk about it again. The reason why I'm going to throw out the name Mo is when you look at all the moves the Raiders made this offseason. Defensive tackle, which means they're probably not too confident in the current guys they have. Then when you also look at Mo Hurst, they were, he was drafted in round five. Do I think that he's more of a second-round talent? Yes, I do. Do I like Mo Hurst? Yes, I absolutely do. Can I tell you why the Raiders don't like him? No, I don't know. But when you look at his snaps, and they continue to go down and down and down, he played only 27% of snaps last year. If you can cut him, you save over $2 million. That's going to be my surprise cut. It's Mo Hurst. But honestly, y'all, I hope I'm wrong because I want Mo around in 2021. Let's go to Brian, New York City. Let me know where you guys are watching from. Send that pick to Saints for Williams and a safety. So send that pick. I, you mean like pick number 17 for Marcus Williams? If that's what you're saying, I personally would do that move. I don't think the Saints do that move, though. Like, they wanted Marcus Williams. That was a guy that they were hoping they could keep. And for only $10 million a year, sure he's on the tag. They're pretty happy about that. All right, Jake, what up, my man? Who do you think will be the Raiders 2021 under the radar breakout player? My pick, Corey Littleton. See, the issue is I can't consider Corey Littleton a breakout player because that's a dude who's had already over 125 tackles with the Rams and he was supposed to be one of the best linebackers in the league. When I think of a true breakout player, I think of somebody who has yet to really break out in the National Football League. I'll throw out the name Brian Edwards. He definitely has a lot of talent. I think he has a lot of hype. Amik Robertson is somebody that I think could really, really break out. And then if I have to throw in one more guy, let's go with Foster Moreau. Those are my breakouts. All right, Autumn Abyss, perfect scenario. Appreciate the question this time. Uh, what trade down to the early 20s and still get Tevin Jenkins? Follow up with two DBs in the second, hit the like button. Okay, so perfect scenario is that you trade down in the early 20s and get Tevin Jenkins, and then you follow it up with two defensive backs in the second. If it's two DBs in the second, I'd say probably the most likely would be a Greg Newsom, cornerback from uh, Northwestern, who I know the Raiders like a lot. Caleb Farley, honestly, might fall to the second round now with his back concerns. And then maybe somebody like Asante Samuel Jr. I know somebody that they like. Uh, Merrig, Holland, Richie Grant would be somebody that I absolutely love as a safety as well. But Autumn Abyss, like the question. Nicholas Blackmore, I think I got that one right. Blakemore. Uh, how many yards do you think Henry Ruggs will have this year? So last year I predicted over 800, and Henry Ruggs was just not even close. Literally, my predictions for Henry Ruggs were literally like exactly what Nelson Aguilar put up. So I'm going to go with 650 yards. Let's go with 41 catches and five touchdowns. Like, do I hope that he can produce more? Yes. But I also know that the Raiders are going to use him all over the football field a little bit more. 
they need to add a little bit more weight to him. Or actually, Henry Ruggs needs to add a little bit more weight. But if you guys want to go down in the comments and let me know how many yards, catches, touchdowns you think Henry Ruggs is going to have, I'll be looking. All right, if you guys love the Raiders, subscribe for free videos every single day. The link is below, youtube.com slash Raiders Report. If you're already a part of the subscribers here, we are also been trying to think about a name for the subscribers because y'all get so wild. Some of the names out there, like my boss been throwing out at me, is a Wrens Nation. We have the Chucky Heads has been being thrown out there. If you guys have a cool nickname that you want me to call the subscribers here at the Raiders Report, message me or throw it down in the comments. But if you haven't subscribed to the number one Raiders show on YouTube, what are you waiting for? The link is below. All right, Hugh, what up? Uh, opinion on Elijah Vera Tucker. So I like Elijah Vera Tucker a lot, uh, offensive lineman from USC. The, the biggest issue is for me, I don't see the Raiders taking a guard in round one. And Vera Tucker to me is a guard. Yes, he could probably play tackle. I just don't think that's the way he's going to be successful in, in, in the NFL. He's a good player, but I'm going to say no to Elijah Vera Tucker in round one for the Raiders and no because he's also going to be a guard. All right, what up, Ray? How do you think Gruden will utilize Drake this year? Appreciate the super chat. From everything that I read from Gruden, from what he says and from what they paid him, they're going to use him in the role that they were hoping that they could use Lynn Bowden Jr. So the term that I'm going to use here is joker. And what does that mean? That means they're going to try to line him up all over the football field. They could line him up, in fact, as a quarterback. They're going to line him up as a receiver, as a running back, and they're just going to try to confuse defenses. I want you to almost think of like a Tyree Kill. Now, he's not Tyree Kill, but the way the Chiefs use Hill where they, they can figure out what type of defensive schemes that you're going to run based on how they move them all over the football field, that's how they're going to use Kenyon Drake. They were hoping they could get it with Lynn Bowden Jr. They traded them away. That's why they overpaid for Drake. Jose Delgado, much love. Appreciate the super chat, my man. Mitch, uh, okay, I should scream. Raiders, with all your predictions with the team and the Raiders go with you, what will the Raiders end and will they make the playoffs? I'm hoping, I was going to say 10-6, and six, but now you gotta you got to bump that up a little bit. Let's go 10-7 and seven record, and I'm hoping they can make the playoffs. But again, it's, it's still so much remains to be seen. I want to see what they do in the draft, and Gruden has been able to prove to me that he's able to get better and better every single year, but I want a playoff run. That's what I want. I know the nation wants it also. Let me know in the comments. What's their record prediction? Saying 10-7 and seven sounds weird, but yeah, 17 games now. So name a player y'all think that the Raiders could cut. Out of all the players on the roster, who is a name that you guys think that the Raiders could cut? Throw it down in the comments section. I got 961 likes right now on the live video. 823 people watching. We are at $149 in supers. If we get to $200 in super chats, it's a fireball shot from Sam and I. Maybe we'll even crack open the the Woodson whiskey. What what do you say? If we get the if we can get to 200 in super chats, Sam says yes. Yeah, so okay, that that's the offer. Let's go to Aaron York. What's up, my man? Hey, Mitch, would you trade Marcus now since he took a pay cut for more draft capital? I still would trade Marcus Mariota. Yes, like is his contract a lot better? Absolutely. If I could get a fourth or fifth round pick for Mariota now because his contract's a lot more favorable, I'm on board for that. He can still make up to $8 million, but he is a good backup quarterback, and if, God forbid, something happens to Derek, he it can step in, we've seen that, and be a reliable guy. That's worth the money. So $3.5 million for a backup, I'm, uh, I'm okay with that. I mean, think about it. Nick Foles is making $4 million. What up, Bray? Does it make sense to draft the defensive tackle in the first round with all the free agent signings done? The only way it makes sense of Christian Barmore is there, and I actually do think he'll be there. It's just not the route that I think the Raiders go. I know they really wanted to be able to build that defensive tackle unit, and I know it's the way the Raiders have been going, but I, what I actually see is this. The fact that the Raiders invested so much time being able to go out and make sure that they felt secure with the defensive tackle position makes me feel like that they're not going to go out and draft a guy like Barmore in round one. All right, Matt, 702. Oh, you skipped him. It's all good. Uh, natural highs. Thoughts on Liam Eichenberg. He's a great offensive tackle from Notre Dame. He also plays left tackle, but am I confident that he could play right tackle? Yes. When you look at a lot of the great offensive linemen right now in the, in, in the NFL, a lot of these guys are coming from Notre Dame. So I like Liam Eichenberg a lot. Uh, when I look at a lot of mock drafts, though, I actually had him going to the Kansas City Chiefs. That I would be a little bit upset about, but I like Eichenberg. However, I'm not taking him in round one, and I don't know if he's going to be there at pick 48. All right, Matt, sorry about that. Get rid of Arnett. I don't have a good feeling about him. I'm not going to get rid of Damon Arnett because if you do cut him, you're 
basically have to eat like $10 million or $7 million this year. But I'm with you in terms of I don't have a good feeling with him either. The one thing that I hate is when players rip apart the fan base that cheers you on. Has the fan base of Raider Nation been tough on Damon Arnett? Yes, absolutely. But it's because he was drafted in the first round and you're expecting more. I don't like when players say very like horrible things to Raiders fans. And I've seen some of the DMs that Damon Arnett has sent to people. That's that shit I don't like. But if uh, if he can get his act together and he starts playing well in the field, that's going to change a lot of those things. But I'm with you. Arnett's one of the players that it's really hard for me to root for him. Obviously, I root for the nation. But Arnett, so far, his attitude, I don't like it. Let's go to BJ Blake James. Okay, we always talk about round one. Which player are you hoping the Raiders can get in round two? We actually had this discussion today at Chat Sports where, you know, you put so much concentration on round one. But for the Raiders, round one really has not worked out very well. But if I could say this, if there's one player that I really hope the Raiders can get in round two, it's Richie Grant, safety out of UCF. Merrick's my number one safety, but I've said this multiple times here on the show. Merrick at 17 or Richie Grant at 48. I will take Richie Grant at 48 every single day of the week. Now, if you can go out and get a top player and you're at pick 17 or you trade back, then this makes this that much better. But Richie Grant, safety out of UCF, he is the number one player that I want the Raiders to get in round two. So take a guess here. Who will the Las Vegas Raiders draft in round two? Throw it down there in the comments section. And we just had some super chats come in, and I believe we're, what, $20.11 $20 away from taking a shot of Fireball, and we got it. So we're going to have to get somebody out there in the chat sports studios to go grab us a shot, and then we'll get this party rolling. But take a guess here. Let me know. Who will the Las Vegas Raiders draft in round two? All right, La Realiziza Nortenia. Sam, if you, if you could tell them to go get us a drink, that, that'd be appreciated. Should the Raiders draft a tackle in the first round and draft defense the rest of the draft? So I actually just put out my Raiders mock draft. If you guys want to go check it out, it's on the channel. It's kind of what I did. I took a tackle uh, high at pick number 17, and then I went very, very heavily on the defensive side of the football. So please go check it out. I did also take a receiver, so curious what you guys have to say about that. But I am with you that the Raiders should go ahead and take care of that right tackle position. And then, yes, defense, 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 defense. Also, Lay, uh, appreciate the super chat, my man. All right, Jonathan, what up? How much better do you think the defense has actually improved so far? And what is the team's best strength going into the season? The best strength in terms of going into the season right now, I almost want to say it's the tight end group just because Darren Waller is an absolute freak of nature. The running back room I feel great about as well. I do also feel really good about our quarterbacks. I mean, Derek Carr, Marcus Mariota, two very respectable QBs there. And uh, has the D improved? Yes, the defense has absolutely improved. I really wasn't too crazy about a lot of the moves they made last year, and a lot of y'all got mad at me for saying that, but, hey, uh, it is what it is. So, all right, let's go to Nicholas Blakemore here coming in. What happened with the Carl Nassib restructure? Unfortunately, I still don't have the details on that. It doesn't look like the Raiders have put out the details on that yet. So, from what I know, though, he takes a big-time cap hit this year. And if the Raiders want to move on from him in the future, it's a little bit easier for them to be able to do. But I don't have the Carl Nassib contract details yet. And for that, I apologize. All right, let's go to Jose. Shoots, shots, shots. I'm going with your Pladakins, and we'll get to 11 and 6. Raiders, love the show. All right, y'all. So, I mean, if you want to open it, we can. Actually, you know what? I'm going to save that. I want to open it on a later date. So we're going to hit the fireball here. Sam, get up here. Appreciate the $40 super chat from Jose. If you guys want to send in some more supers, I'm not afraid to take a few extra drinks because guess what? I got a five-day weekend coming up, and I'm ready to get this party going. Sam goes, some of us got to work tomorrow. Don't worry, y'all. I still got videos coming out for you every single day of the week. I promise you. I promise you. So we got 708 likes, 802 people watching. Cheers to the nation. And, yes, this is uh, the guy behind the scene making all the magic happen. Cheers, Sam. Cheers to Raider Nation. Cheers to Jose and all the other Super Chats that came in. Woo. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll crack open the Woodson whiskey at some point. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, y'all. Appreciate the Super Chat. No doubt about it. I'm also going to be joining some friends on some IG, no, some YouTube lives this week. So make sure you guys, if you want more information on that, hit me up on Instagram. I'm at MitchellRens365. Hopefully you guys join me. Hopefully you guys are going to have an awesome, awesome week. But if I don't get to your questions, seriously, don't be afraid to DM me. All right, we got a few more questions coming in here. Raider Nation, 
Should we use Henry Ruggs like Casey uses Tyreek Hill? Yes. Yeah, I mean, 100%. The, the biggest way you should use Henry Ruggs is how they use Tyreek Hill. The issue is Henry Ruggs is not Tyreek Hill. Nobody's Tyreek Hill. Nobody moves the way that that man does. Plus, Tyreek is a lot more thick than Ruggs. Ruggs needs to put on some weight. He needs to be able to keep the speed, but nobody's going to be Tyreek Hill. I mean, I've never seen anybody move that way. Let's go to Theo Henry. Trade for one of the Washington football team's defensive tackles. So I've actually said that I would give up our second-round pick for Deron Payne. Like, Washington has so many great players, and when I go back and I look at a lot of my draft videos, one of the guys that I wanted, Montez Sweat. Ah, the Raiders didn't take him. Deron Payne, another guy that I was really, really high on. Raiders didn't take him. So, like, I, I hear you loud and clear, but I am with you. I would give up our 48th overall pick for one of the Washington football team's DTs. The guy that I think makes the most sense is Deron Payne. All right, SA9, this is the last question unless we get another super chat. What's up, Mitch? Hope you're having a good day. What do you think about drafting a pass coverage linebacker in round one to cover Kelsey? And who do you think the best option is? So the only two linebackers that I'm going to draft at pick number 17, realistically, you can maybe give me the idea of Zayvon Collins as well, but Jeremiah Wilson, more Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons reminds me a lot of a guy like Khalil Mack, like that's how you would use him. Jeremiah Wilson score more is built like a safety, like a Derwin James or Jamal Adams, but not really somebody that's going to be a coverage linebacker. The best coverage linebacker in the draft, his name is Jabril Cox. He is from LSU, and I think you can get him in round three. So if that's the route, that's what I'm going to try to do.